Yeah. It's really kind of hard for me because I'm not used to talking oh, in front of so many people, <laughs> especially on a microphone. That's a good job. I know, I'm used to talking. That's true. But, um, Oscar wouldn't do this for me. <laughs> so I'm going to start. It's my privilege to start this tribute to Oscar, our dad. And the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little bit of history about dad. And I sat down with him a couple weeks ago and I I had him recall a lot of his army days and things that happened. And he actually could remember quite a few things. I was really surprised. Oh, well, good, Dad. Yeah, you're welcome. I have to put my cheaters on to see what I wrote. Okay, um, his parents were Anna and Sigvard, and they came to America from Christiansen, Norway. And they had gotten married in Norway, and they had their honeymoon in the USA. And my grandfather had made a bedroom set and sold it for their fare to come across on the boat. And um, they came into Ellis Island. Then they um, had cousins and relatives in Detroit. So they came to Detroit and they never left. So this is how they got to America. His name used to be spelt with double A-S-C-O. And on his birth certificate over there, it still is spelt like that, but my grandfather changed it because Instead of saying Osbo, they used to call him Asbo. And my grandfather didn't like it, so he, he changed it. And I think um, Dad and Grandpa are the only ones that still have a double ASBO on their um, birth certificates. I think it was changed. There's still the Asbo. Yeah. The Asbo. The Asbo. So Dad was born one year later at Detroit Providence Hospital. He's the eldest of five children. There was four boys and one girl. There was Dad, Uncle John, who couldn't make it. He's um, sick. He lives in Florida. Um, Dad had brothers Arthur and George, and then they had little Betsy, the baby of the family over here. She came all the way from Florida for us. And uh, his family moved to Royal Oak in 1926, and Dad started kindergarten at Addison Elementary. It was a little two-room schoolhouse, he told me. And when he was nine years old, there was just a terrible tragedy in my um, grandparents' family. Both of her sons, George and Arthur, got struck throat, which is something so simple, and they both died within 10 days of each other. They were five and two. So I don't know how my grandma went on after that, after 10 days losing two children, but she did. She had little Betsy. So um, they were happy they got a girl into the family. So dad was about nine. I think you were... 10 when Betsy was born. See, I was born on the boat, You were not. You were conceived on the boat, maybe, but not born on the boat. No. Jeez, this is my seat. Wait. You'll have time. I said, then we have a discrepancy because when Betsy got here, I said, Dad told me all this stuff. Is this true? Is this true? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I don't remember that. But Dad said, when Betsy was born, she was the only one born at home. And um, Betsy says, I think I was born in a hospital. I don't remember. <laughs> dad said, you were born at home. So I remember that um, he said his mom and dad gave him and Uncle John some golf putters and sent them out in the front yard and said, you go play now. We're having a baby. <laughs> so he did. They were out playing in the front yard. I don't know how long they played in the front yard. <laughs> Until it was over. I guess there you go. So, um, a, few, a few years later, they moved to Mount Clemens. Dad was 15. And he went to Stafford School and then to Mount Clemens High School. And he never left. He's been here for his whole life. He met Mom when he was 19, and his brother John was Mom's paper boy, and Dad would drive him around in the car. Yeah. Okay, all right, come back. Here I am. Um, <laughs> Uncle John was their paper boy in the family, and they lived at 14 in Gratiot, and uh, they dated for about a year and became engaged. And Dad said that he took her to the Old Jew Theater. If you're a Mount Clemens person, you know where the Old Jew Theater was. And they were watching a movie called Hell's a Poppin'. And that's how they celebrated their engagement. And while they were there, it came on the screen that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. It was December 7th, 1941. And Dad started a new career after that day. He got a letter saying, greetings, you will report for service. So on August 11th, 1942, he entered the Army. He was 5 foot 11 and a half inches tall. 20 years old and he weighed 121 pounds. So, so he always says when he was in the army, that's how he never got shot at because he just turned sideways, nobody could ever see him. So we can't say that now, but that's how it was then. So he did a 90 day basic training in Georgia. And while he was there, he said he sprained his knee and he got water on the knee and he was hospitalized for 11 days. 
I was very concerned because I thought, oh, that rigorous training, he must have really had some terrible times. And he said, no. He got hurt while he was sliding into second base playing a baseball game. <laughs> so I, didn't, I wasn't very sympathetic after that. And while he was there, he, um, mom came to visit him, then his fiance. And while he was there, he got orders, shipped out, went overseas. So he caught a boat to Africa, was his first place he went. He was a private in the Big Red One. He's very proud of his service days, and so are we. During World War II, he fought for our country in Africa, Sicily, England, France, Belgium, Germany, and Czechoslovakia. And on June 1944, he was on the beach of Normandy for the Normandy invasion also. So then after that, he, the war was over in 45, and he caught a boat back to Germany. And he said when they pulled in um, in Boston, he said the bands were playing, everybody welcoming back all these soldiers of war. And he got a seven-day leave, made his way to Mount Clemens, back to his family and his fiance. He was discharged in October of 45. He got seven weeks' pay of $20 a week. And But he had saved $2,000 while he was over there. But Dad, liking the, the beer and the fun, he, he blew that money in a matter of how long, Dad? <laughs> Until it ran out, which was very quickly. Very quickly, he said. He said, but his words were, but I sure had fun while it lasted. I can see that for sure. So I thank Dad for fighting for our freedom. And unless we were there, no one knows what these soldiers went through. And, and a lot of times they don't like to talk about it, but he has shared a lot of his stories with us. Got married in February 1946. They lived in a cockroach in part in Lincoln and Mount Clemens. He said there was cockroaches everywhere. He said it was terrible. He returned to a building trade school in Detroit to finish his apprenticeship in carpentry. And um, he worked for Mr. Larson and Mr. Swee. I always remember him going to the cabinet shops and working there, driving forever to work. And he said whoever had work, that's where he was. He he just he worked all the time. We never knew. We never knew any. I don't know, any problems, any financial problems, they always just, Dad did what he had to do for us kids and we're thankful. Um, he had three wonderful children, <laughs> Catherine, Oscar Jr., and Anne Marie. And some of my fondest memories are of our Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays that we spent with Bernice and Earl and Agnes and Derwin and Uncle Arnie and Mrs. G, and uh, those were our best times, and those are my, they were such a tradition. We always did uh, Christmas Eve and Thanksgiving, we switched off at different people's houses, and Aunt Dorothy and Uncle John, and uh, it was just the most wonderful time of my life, and I wish that we had traditions like that for our children to keep them going. But um, we did that with all our family, and so many of those people are gone now, so that just makes the memories even more cherished, because those people can't be with us any longer. But, and also with mom's side of the family, we had some parties. We had parties and singing and playing the accordion and playing the harmonica. Uncle Bill with his harmonica, dad on the spoons, people drinking, falling over. Oh, it was great. You know? <laughs> singing songs. I said, we learned all those Good Night Irene and, oh, uh, what are some of the other ones? Show me the way to go home. Show me the way to go home. <laughs> sunshine. You are my sunshine. So all the kids know all the songs and, we learned them from these parties. It was great. I learned how to play euchre and pinochle from watching Aunt Mary and Uncle Bill. And Dad, and every Saturday night, Mom and Dad and Mary and Uncle Bill, they would play pinochle. And, you know. Wasn't it? I don't Who's think... I don't might have played some of them. Okay, well, please, don't put it on the memories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. almost done here. And, of course, we spent a lot of time at the American Legion. I mean, Dad was the commander, and Mom was... Uh, Commanderous, what was she? <laughs> was she? she was president of the auxiliary. Uh, I didn't know the word. Yeah, can't hear. So Kathy and I, Oscar, um, we spent a lot of time here. We ran these calls back and forth. Well, like the kids are doing now. So, but Dad, he's, been a, he's a lifetime member of the American Legion. He's he's a very proud veteran. So um, we come here. He doesn't come here as often as he used to. He used to live here, I think. But <laughs> he's home now. So in 64, Dad started working for Ford Motor Company until his retirement in 84. He purchased his first home in 64, and he still resides there today, the one on Clare Street. And in 1983, after 37 years of marriage, Mom died, and life changed for all of us. 
We were devastated and thought Dad would be sad and lonely for, forever. But then Nelda came into his life. She was already in his life, but she came into his life in a different way. She was there for him. She comforted him. She gave him strength. Her kind heart and compassion won Dad's heart and a mutual love for him. And they were married October 25th, 1985. Dad gave eight children, many grandchildren, great grandchildren. I should have asked you how many, but I know it's many. <laughs> many. Yes, and we're so glad that everybody's here. This is just a tribute to Dad. So their lives were entwined until their death in 95. Dad's life again changed very drastically. He has had the love of two wonderful women, many children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, all the relatives, friends. This is just shows you what a kind of a person he is. And as the years have passed, we've shared love, life, death. There's been happy times. There's been sad times. But I appreciate all the years that we've shared with Dad. Every moment of his 80 years. He's a wonderful dad. I didn't want to do it. He's a wonderful dad. I have to read it. He's a wonderful dad. <laughs> Let me see what else I said about him. Oh, he's kind and caring. And I have so much to thank you for, Dad. I thank God for him every day. That he's given me well, 50 years for me, but 80 years of his life. Such a good person. 51. <laughs> what? Yeah, but somebody told me today that they thought I was the same age as Tootie. Not that Tootie's that old, but she's a few years older than me. And they said, oh, you're the same age as Tootie, right? And I'm like, oh, well, not quite. <laughs> 20 more years? I'm not to tell your age or anything. <laughs> if I'm 51, 20, oh, okay. <laughs>